and gotten that letter. Yeah. Well, I'd like to uh, make a, uh, I'd like to prepare a draft for you. All right. May I? I wish you would. I'd like to get a draft. I think that's an awfully good avenue to make another expression on your part. Yeah. So, I've made expressions to another. These are not, these kids are not bad kids. This is not the new left uh, system. These kids are the more responsible leaders of the community. And I read their letter, or there are things you disagree with in the letter. But uh, it's a respectful letter. It's not one of these vituperative, uh, ill-considered things. And I, I do believe that this gives a very good opportunity for you to make a statement in this area which will have its impact in the, among the young people. And uh, I think it ought to be done. I think their letter ought not to be disregarded. And I think a very, uh, very friendly, positive, firm statement can be made on the subject. And I think it ought to be made. Uh, what do you think you ought to say? Well, I would, I would state, uh, I would like Baltimore. What I'm really talking about is a restatement of what you said in Baltimore, uh, kind of bringing it up to date. And uh, point out, uh, and, and to, I discover one thing, and you know this too from your lifelong experience, that you need repetition. And very often when you say the same thing, it sounds new and fresh, but it hasn't been said for a while. And uh, all I would repeat, but I, uh, I, would, I would suggest some ways to do it. Uh, uh, because I think that letter, unlike some others that I can think of, warrants a reply on your part. Uh, as I said, I regarded the letter to be a respect, uh, respectful letter. Uh, it did not uh, include animus. It had a lot of uh, it had a lot of misconceptions. But uh, you expect misconceptions. What were their misconceptions? You know, they're youngsters. <coughs> they haven't gone through the mill, and they they don't know what life is. They're just on the, the beginning of it. So that uh, if you're agreeable, I'll get up a draft. Good. While I'm here. Today. Good. I wish you would send it down to you if you do what you want. But I really believe, and I would like to urge, that you do a private. Good. Get it up and get it uh, over to Rostow today, and uh, and we'll get on the picture. And, uh, what do you think we ought to say, just in effect, that we are anxious for a ceasefire? We'll go anywhere to talk. We want to take our... Uh, you are first for a ceasefire. If you're ready to have a ceasefire come about. Uh, if you're looking for a peaceful settlement, you have no desire to overthrow the northern. What you've said many times, people in the north, all you want them to do is leave the people in the south alone, that the people in the south are entitled, as a matter of humanity, to, uh, to lead a peaceful life, and that uh, there, there are casualties, but there are casualties on all sides of this. And, uh, and every casualty is to be regretted, casualties in the South as well as the North, that uh, you have gone and are willing to go the extra mile to bring about a peaceful resolution. Uh, you are not willing to let, uh, let the people in the South be sacrificed. They're, they're a friendly country. They're recognized by 60 nations in the world as a, as a sovereign power that the Geneva Accords went so far as to prevent the introduction of a single civilian after a single armed man passed the demilitarized zone. If you have tried to get even the demilitarized zone uh, neutralized without success, that uh, you're going to, you're going, that uh, you, you, what you said, that you, under great provocation, exercise restraint, you're going to continue to exercise restraint. You have no more fervent desire than what you said in Manila to bring every American there uh, back home. That uh, the, uh, the question of the uh, inequities of the 
draft law which concerns them, concern you, and that uh, that's why you set up the uh, commission. Matter of urgent study, uh, and uh, you uh, appreciate their good motives because they're the beneficiaries of the inequity in the draft law. I think you might say that uh, sometimes you see these things in a little different perspective from different uh, uh, observation points, but that uh, suffice it to say uh, we are concerned with opinions, and we are very concerned with opinions of uh, young people and uh, responsible uh, young people as uh, they appear to be and that uh, they have influence with us kind of take the russian line that they have influence with north vietnam you young people have influence with us and uh, we are as you are concerned with casualties and we are anxious for ceasefire and we are anxious for talks and we are anxious to take the money that we spend on bullets and bombs and spend on bread. And you have our assurance that we agree with you on all these things. Now, if you can influence your counterparts in some way, or if you can get this message over, uh, we can't do it by ourselves. It's not a one-way street. But uh, if, we, if they will meet us just part of the way, uh, well, you can take our assurance that, that we'll be there. Right. Right. That's very good. I'll, I'll try to draft something, but I think that uh, uh, this group I would respond to. Because these are the editors of the paper. These are not, as I said, part of the fact of going these new left fellows. These are the more responsible campus leaders. And as I said, while I didn't agree with everything in the letter, my long shot, I was impressed with the respectful tone of the letter. And when youngsters are mature enough to address the president in respectful terms, in, a, in an era where there seems to be diminishing respect for everything, I think they ought to be encouraged by a dialogue with them. And I think it also affords a kind of a good uh, forum. Uh, for you to express what you have expressed in the past, but bring it up to date. And I think this is much better than some of the other ones. How do you feel about the budget? Well, you know, I, will, I told you how I felt about it. I'd like you to come up with a goddamn fighting speech, not a conciliatory. I'd like you to do a little Harry Truman. Now you probably don't agree with that. I think you ought to come out and you ought to say you're not going to repeat an issue in the great society. You're going to expand it. Our America has great unmet needs. We have the resources to eliminate these, uh, these pockets. And there are only pockets in a great affluent society. And that. Uh, I, you're a U.S. president, are going to do it. And you're not going to be deterred. Uh, and you're going to ask the Congress... What do you think about tax bill? I'd, I'd have taxes to finance. I'd, uh, at the same time, I would also say that I'm going to take the water out of the government wherever there is water. And there is water. I'm going to squeeze it out. But I'm not going to prevent children from, uh, from being educated. And I'm going to get rid of their literacy, and I'm going to retrain any man who, who can't get a job because he's not trained. And uh, I'm going to rebuild our cities. And uh, I don't, uh, I expect the thing of uh, my, uh, my, my thought of you would be the thing would be a real surprise of all. And Speech. And you expect the Congress to support you. I think the Congress, you remember, uh, you remember what uh, old Justice Holmes told Franklin Roosevelt when Holmes called on Roosevelt? Do you recall that story? No. 
6,000 income. Uh, we have reduced it from 40 million in 1960 who had uh, incomes under 3,000 to about uh, 32 billion now, and we propose to reduce it to another billion and a half uh, this year. I, I know that, and I know, I know that. Now, uh, Some things become symbolic. What? Some things become symbolic. Well, we've got two and a half million people that in the last five months have had medical care that they never had before. We've got to nine million people that have been brought under minimum wage that were never brought before. We gave them a 7% increase to Social Security last year. We're planning to more than double that this year again. Uh, we uh, are spending about $10 billion more on health and education this year than we did when I became uh, a president. The elementary educational bill uh, has got 